to The Hypnotist, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. Brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs, and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Adam's clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. So, get yourself comfortable and enjoy today's episode of The Hypnotist. Hi, Adam here, and on today's episode of The Hypnotist, I was actually working with someone that was addicted to crack cocaine. Uh, it was a gentleman that had his own business, um, and he really took up the drug after quite a messy divorce um, and, and various kind of problematic issues in his life, and he found solace in this particular drug. But it reached a point where it was having a negative impact on his health, on his emotional well-being and on his finances um, you know so he knew that he couldn't sustain a an addiction to this particular substance because he would lose everything and he would also lose his reputation which was actually more important to him than his health um, but there was clearly a part of him that was very reluctant to give up this particular drug so there was this conflict taking place and what's really interesting is that, you know, quite often I, I'll use parts therapy with clients and, and you see subtle changes like posture, facial expressions when you're speaking to different parts of the unconscious mind. I remember this session and, and what was really powerful about it is the level of difference between the two different parts. And it was almost like if you've seen the film uh, Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, uh, the Go the Gollum and Smeagol characters, uh, you know, they've got the Smeagol character that's very nice and helpful, and then the Gollum that's kind of very, you know, kind of distrusting and malicious in some way. The level of facial expression changes when I worked with this man um, just kind of reminded me of, of that kind of scene um, where Andy Serkis is kind of playing both characters and kind of switching from one to the other. Um, the way in which I use parts therapy with him um, was really to reassure the part that we we need to figure out what's actually going to be the true intention behind taking this drug and see if we can meet that intention in a better way because the reality check for this part is that if it just continues to let's say pursue this addiction well then there's a high probability that the guy would be dead in which case the addiction can't be pursued anyway so it's about getting to the root cause of the intention behind the addiction and seeing if we can meet that need in a different way Although crack cocaine was the substance of this particular addiction hypnotherapy, um, if you listen to this, I'm not sure if I actually use the, the substance itself, um, but if I do, you can just kind of um, switch that with whatever it is that you're addicted to that you would want to change. And that might be sugar, it might be coffee, it might be cigarettes, whatever it might be. But just know that you're highly likely to also have a part that is reluctant to give up because when people give up but then go back, it's normally because there's conflicted parts in the subconscious mind. So um, very useful if you have an addiction that you don't want to keep anymore. Um, and very useful just to understand how the different parts of the subconscious mind really fight to keep and sustain an addiction as well. So for any hypnotherapists listening, you know, I'd appreciate any thoughts or feedback you have in the comments as well. So uh, find a comfortable place where you won't be disturbed. Uh, relax and enjoy.
breathe in, I want you to imagine you're breathing in a feeling of peace and tranquility. Breathing in relaxation and breathing out any tension. With each and every breath, just feeling like you're going deeper and deeper relaxed. Sometimes it's useful to imagine the feeling of relaxation being a particular color. And you get to use your imagination to decide what color that may be. Because it may be a bright color, a glowing color, or maybe changing colors. But as you breathe it in, breathe in a sense of peace, tranquility, and relaxation. Allow your body to do what your body already has the ability to do. Because you don't have to consciously think about your heart taking oxygen from your lungs and pumping it to every cell in your body. It just happens. So allow your body to distribute this feeling of peace, tranquility and relaxation to every cell in your body. As you breathe in this feeling of relaxation, pay attention to the places in your body where you feel tension. Sometimes that might be the muscles around the eyes, sometimes the jaw, sometimes the forehead. Sometimes there's a feeling of tension in the neck or the shoulders. Sometimes a feeling of unsettlement or anxiety in the gut. But it's interesting that the more you pay attention to the places of tension, the more the body starts distributing that feeling of peace, tranquility and relaxation to those very places. And therefore, with each and every breath, you're going deeper and deeper relaxed. Occasionally your conscious mind will pick up on different sounds. Perhaps the sound of uh, the wind rattling a window. Perhaps the sound of traffic or noises in the street below. Perhaps even the sound of a ticking of a clock. But in a strange and contradictory way, the more that your conscious mind is distracted, the better able I am to influence your unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind is the part of your mind that does so many decisions without conscious thought. You don't decide to breathe faster or slower. You don't decide to make your heart beat faster or slower. You don't decide to blink. Your body just does it for you. So as you breathe in this feeling of relaxation, Allow your body to seek out the parts in your body where there is tension. Allow that tension to be diluted. And sometimes it's useful to think of any tension as something solid like crystals or shards of ice. Because you already know what happens to ice on a hot day. And as you breathe in this warm feeling of relaxation, Imagine that it has the ability to melt away any tension now. The more you think about that tension, the more you're directing your focus to relax that tension. Therefore, each and every out-breath is then releasing that tension. Simply by breathing in, you're allowing your body to become deeper and deeper relaxed. And simply by allowing your body to breathe out, that tension is leaving your body. But I want you to imagine that it isn't just relaxation that you're breathing in. I want you to imagine that you're breathing in a sense of resourcefulness. There's been times in your life where you've been highly resourceful. And in that highly resourceful state, You've been able to make good decisions, have an accurate perspective. You've been able to see things as they really are. In that resourceful state, you could deal with stress easily. You could manage to handle lots of different things. So I want you to imagine that you're breathing in a feeling of relaxation and resourcefulness. And anything that can make you feel unresourceful 
like stress, like tension, like anxiety, like overwhelm is leaving your body. You're breathing in what's good and you're allowing to leave what is no longer useful. And I want you to imagine that you're somewhere relaxing outside, a peaceful relaxing place, a place in nature, a place where you can breathe fresh air in, a place where you have the ability to simply unwind and relax. There is no pressure here, no concern here, no problems here, just a feeling of being completely safe, completely secure. interesting just by being in this place you can breathe fresh air breathing in more of that relaxation and resourcefulness and allow you to go deeper and deeper relaxed and I want you to imagine in this place there's a doorway and in this doorway it will lead to a staircase down now this place really should have a doorway because it's outside in nature and this door does not even need to be connected to a building. Just imagine a floating doorway out there in nature and just know that behind that doorway is a staircase downwards to a deeper part of your subconscious mind. Part of your subconscious mind where we've got the ability to meet different parts of your subconscious because you communicate to different people in different ways depending on the context. The way you speak to a small child would be different to how you speak to a police officer or person in authority. In the same way that we communicate to different people in different ways, we communicate to ourselves in different ways depending on the part that is activated. In the same way that an aeroplane can be flown manually or on autopilot. I want you to imagine that your mind can be under the influence or control of different parts of your subconscious mind. And there are different parts, many different parts. But there is a part that really wants to be free of a particular addiction that is no longer serving you. And it is possible that it was serving you and beneficial for a short period of time, but that time has passed now. And yet there is another part that is holding on to that because it still feels a benefit or need. Your imagination can imagine that floating door just out there in nature. Let me know by nodding your head. That's right. I'm going to count down from five to one and you will open the door, walk through the door and see that staircase in front of you. Starting to count five, just grabbing the handle, four, twisting the handle, three, opening the door, two, walking through the door, one, closing the door behind you and now finding yourself at the top of a stairs. At the top of this staircase, there are stairs that are well lit, sturdy and solid, that lead downwards to deeper parts of your subconscious mind. I will count downwards from 10 to 1 and you will imagine walking down the staircase. And with each descending step you will feel 10%, one tenth, deeper and deeper relaxed. Allowing all unnecessary tension to just melt away as you walk down that staircase. Starting to count 10, just taking that first step and feeling immediately 10%, one tenth deeper and deeper relaxed. Nine. Another one tenth deeper and deeper relaxed, feeling like a weight is being lifted from your shoulders. Eight. Feeling any tension in and around your eyelids and eyes and forehead, just releasing now. Seven, another 10% deeper and deeper relaxed. Feeling so comfortably relaxed. Now that's right, 
six. Just allowing any anxiety in any part of your body to just melt away now. Five, halfway down the staircase, feeling deeper and deeper relaxed. Allowing any tension in your jaw to just magically disappear. Feeling that relaxation spread down your shoulders, neck, all the way down your arms to the very tips of your fingers. Four. Ten percent deeper and deeper relaxed. That's right. Going more and more deeply relaxed. Three. That's right. Deeper and deeper relaxed now. Two. Going down the staircase. One. Down the staircase. Zero. At the bottom of the staircase. And sometimes it's useful to turn around, look up at that staircase, just to see how far deeply down you've been. I want you to look forward, see there is a short corridor that leads to an empty room. And in that empty room will be a part of your subconscious mind, a part that still craves this drug that you're addicted to. A part that wants it, that feels like it needs it, that can't stop thinking about it. Very soon, I will count down from five to one, you will enter that room, and in the opposite corner of the room, you will see the part that still wants this drug. You will be able to see this part as if it is something physical and real. It will have facial expressions, you will be able to judge its emotional state. That's right getting closer to that room now, five, four, three, two, one, walking into that room, and then on the opposite side of the room, you can see the part, the part that really craves, that really wants, this thing that you've been wanting for a while, been using for a while, and although you know that you want to be free of this thing, you do accept that there is a part that doesn't want to let go, that there is a civil war taking place, that there are parts that want different things. And if you can see that part on the other side of the room, the part that craves this drug, let me know by nodding your head.
what it's done. Not just to physical health, but mental health. Communicate that to that part. I want you to communicate to that part what it's cost you financially. What it's cost you in terms of your own sense of identity. All the problems it's caused. Particularly when it comes to business and finance. And in turn, what that then has created in terms of stress, pressure. And as you communicate all of these real consequences and possible consequences to the future, I want you to notice that this part had no idea. All it wanted to do was to help you. And it had no idea of these unintended consequences of pursuing what it thinks is just a good thing. I want you to ask this part if it's possible for me to communicate directly to this part. Because there are two ways that I can handle this part. I can banish this part so it doesn't interfere or influence your life in any way. But it's much better if we can work with this part. This part could be an integral and essential part of a future without this addiction. And that's the outcome I would want. So if this part is okay, if I communicate directly with it, just let me know by nodding your head or twitching your finger. That's right. And I want you to shift your perspective from where you're seeing the part to being in the part. And when you're actually in that part, let me know by nodding your head or twitching your finger. That's right. I'm now communicating to the part that is still addicted, that still craves this substance. And I know that you have had good intentions. And again, I would like to thank you for those good intentions. You've been trying to help, whether that intention is to protect, to cope, or just provide balance by having a bit of pleasure a very tough life. I also know that you had no idea of the devastated consequences of helping in the way that you've been helping. Had you known of these devastating consequences, you would not have chosen to pursue these intentions in the way that you have. Now, if you were a member of a company You may have good intentions, but you haven't been doing the responsibilities in the way that they've been needed. If you were an employee in a company, you would be fired. No longer able to influence anything within that company. But I'd like to offer you an alternative. A promotion. If you've been trying to protect, what if you can protect in a new way? If you've been trying to cope... What if you can cope in a new way? And if you've been trying to give pleasure, joy, what if you can do that in a new way? There is an opportunity here for you to help in the way that you've always intended, but without any of these devastating negative consequences. And if you are receptive, to helping in this new way, having more influence, more responsibility than ever before, just let me know by nodding your head. That's right. The key to protection is to avoid the devastating consequences of either detrimental health or detrimental financial health, you will protect by enabling good choices to be made. Choices that are beneficial 
to mental health, physical health and financial health. That way you get to protect the body, the mind and the life and the livelihood. If you want to protect in this new way, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. But it isn't just about protection, it's about coping. And you've been craving something that has helped you to cope. But it isn't the only way of coping. There are so many different ways. Sometimes the best way of coping is by getting out there in nature. Sometimes exercising can make someone feel resourceful. Maybe it's immersing yourself in a new project, learning something new. But if you are able to cope in a new way that offers growth rather than destruction, let me know. forward 
six months now and experience what that would be like if change does not take place. Consider what you've lost. What you've lost in terms of health. What you've lost in terms of finances, assets. What you've lost emotionally. Really associate into that feeling of having lost so much. Think of what you've lost in terms of the perception that other people have for you. I want you to go forward now a year in the future. A year in the future where change does not take place. And notice. Notice that this was not sustainable for a year. The devastating impact means a very different life. And if this is something that you're determined to avoid and to protect from happening, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And I want you to rewind all the way back to the present. And knowing, absolutely knowing, the consequences of this habit in the present and in the future, knowing what you now know, would you decide to start taking this drug as a vehicle to protect, to cope, and to offer joy? No. And that is always the foundation of an excellent decision. Knowing what you now know, would you even begin this thing? And if the answer is no, then surely this is the opportune time to create a new decision. There is a very powerful belief that many people share. And that is that what you're not changing, you're choosing. And I want you to think again that knowing what you now know, you would not choose to begin taking this substance. And therefore, if you are now not willing to change, you are making a choice, even with all the new information that you have, about how destructive it is in the present and will be in the future, you are now choosing to start this habit. If that feels like a ridiculous choice to make, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. Because when something's ridiculous, you can laugh at it. And although it feels like this could and should have been tackled months ago, you can only make the best decisions in the present. Knowing what you now know, would you begin taking this drug? If the answer is no, then you are now making a choice each and every time Every new day is a new page in your story. Whatever choices you make on that new page are choices. You can choose to continue the tragedy or decide that this new page will be the beginning of a new chapter. And one of the best stories ever told is that of people reaching the brink of the abyss and having the strength of courage and character to fight back for a new future of their own design. You have the resources, the power, the abilities to make a new choice, to decide enough is enough. That this new day, I don't want to protect myself in this way. I don't want to cope in this way. I don't want to give pleasure in this way. And trust your unconscious mind to enable you to make new choices. Choices that steer your future in the different direction. 
know I don't know whether you're going to make this choice today or tomorrow. But when you do make that choice, suddenly you're creating momentum. With each minute, each hour, each day, increases your ability to pursue a new future. And I want you to imagine what it would be like one day, just one day after deciding enough is enough. I want you to notice that that future won't be drastically different in the realities of your health, your finances, but psychologically, psychologically you will feel like a new person. You've turned that page, that there is a new chapter about growth, rebuilding, claiming the future and the identity that you truly want. I want you to imagine what it would be like a week after making that decision to be free. At that point, your body will start to be free of the dependency. At that point, you will have found alternatives. There will be noticeable improvements in your health, more mental clarity. I want you to go forward to a month after making that decision. Suddenly everything is a lot easier. You needed to go through the pain to appreciate the pleasure of being truly free. I want you to climb into that future version of you one month into the future where you look back and just feel how proud of yourself you are that a month has passed without touching this substance. I want you to fast forward six months into the future. Six months is enough time now for your health to have been repaired to have taken a lot more control in all different areas of your life. While there's some parts of you that may still even miss this substance, nothing could convince you to start again. The risks are too high, the consequences too grave, and nothing feels as good as it feels to simply be free. Every hour that passes. 
passes, every day that passes becomes a week, becomes a month, until you're free. I want you to imagine that you're now in the perspective of the other part of your subconscious mind in that room, seeing that the part that was, the part responsible for this addiction is now evolving, changing. Physically it looks different, the energy it projects has changed. It wants to protect you, but it protects you in a new way. Now that it's aware of the consequences, it can work with you rather than against you. And its mission right now is nothing other than getting you to the point of the threshold. The point where you're willing, all things considered, to walk away from this drug and never look back. And if all parts are in agreement that that is the absolute priority and objective right now, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. Although you entered the room as separate parts, you are going to leave the room together, working in collaboration. You are no longer enemies, you are allies. You have the same goal, the same motive, and that is to have a future of your own choosing. To be free of these shackles of addiction and to have a new future of choice again. You know what the future looks like if you don't change and you know what the future looks like if you do change. And now it becomes a choice. One of the easiest dilemmas you can ever make. In a few moments time, I'm gonna count from one to 10 to awaken you. You will awaken with all parts fully wide awake in this point in time in the present in this room you will awake with a feeling of resourcefulness with a feeling of clarity with an overall sense that there is an imminent decision to be made where all parts are aligned in that new choice knowing that when the choice is finally made everything becomes easy there is simply no desire to go back. Momentum will be on your side. You will awaken in this room, fully alert, fully awake, full of resourcefulness, looking forward to reaching that point of threshold, starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up, four, five, six, more alert, seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes, nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake. Thank you for listening to The Hypnotist with Adam Cox, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. To automatically receive the latest episodes, please subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, please share this episode with just one friend you think it could help. And if this episode helped you, please leave us a five-star review.